Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together. Your Sabbath day, Heavenly Father, the day you said to come together so we can learn more about you, Lord God. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Lord God, not just understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. The title of today's lesson is, Believers Need to Hold Each Other Accountable When Walking in the Lord. Believers need to hold each other accountable when walking in the Lord. And as we do every Sabbath day, we're going to read Psalms, 1, uh, Psalms 119, 165 to 176. Psalms 119, 165 to 176. This is great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplications come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and the law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I, do not, for I do not forget thy commandments. Amen. So like I said, dealing with the title of the lesson again, believers need to hold each other accountable when walking in the Lord. And that's what we're supposed to be doing when we're serving the Lord. Like I said, we're supposed to hold each other accountable because a lot of times, if you're seeing your brother or your sister in the faith, and you're seeing them going in error and letting them do the things that they want to do, that's not, that's not holding your, your, uh, your brother or sister in, in, uh, in Christ accountable because why? God wants to try to make sure that those that accept him, that we can get into the kingdom. But if you're seeing your, if you're seeing your brother or your sister, you know, lying and stealing and eating unclean food, breaking the Sabbath and things like that and celebrating pagan holidays, you're supposed to remind them in love when you do it. Like I said, but now they choose not to do it, it's okay. But you want to make sure that you continue to be that example so that even if they kind of straight away, you can, uh, they come back, they can see you as an example. But more importantly, like I said, we want to just try to lead them to Christ so they can continue to keep following him. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6. We're going to read 1 through 21. Because see, Jeremiah was also reminding the, our ancestors, the children of Israel, to continue to keep the commandments. Because if they didn't, God was going to kick them out of the land. And that's what Jeremiah was reminding uh, them. Because remember, we, we have to be watchmen. As a matter of fact, uh, real quick, um, I'm going to go to Isaiah 56 real quick. Before I go to Jeremiah, I just want to put this in your notes, though. Um, um, Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, Isaiah 56, I'm going to start at verse 10, let me see, I'm going to start at verse 9, Isaiah 56, I'm going to start at verse 9, it says, all ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest, he says, his watchman, now remember when you're a watchman, a watchman is supposed to um, remind people, you know what I'm saying, like I said, uh, the coming of the Lord and also to be obedient of the Lord, so he says, his watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Because just like a dog, you know, like if someone comes in our backyard, what's the first thing Judah going to do? He's he going to start barking. But if you have a dog, a person come to the backyard, and Judah just sitting there not doing anything, you're like, hold on, like, what's, what's, what's your use? You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to let us know that danger is imminent to remind us so we can get prepared. So that's what pastors are also supposed to be doing as well, to remind people or watchmen, to remind people to continue to have faith in Jesus Christ and to keep his commandments. Because if not... Then this is what he says right here. He says right here, because a lot of, a lot of these, uh, these false teachers are greedy and hungry for money, are filthy lucre. Look at verse 11. Yea, they are all greedy dogs, which cannot, we said, which can never have enough. And they are all shepherds that cannot understand. Because remember, a shepherd is supposed to lead the flock. But these are shepherds that cannot understand the word of God because they're not keeping the word of God. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain from his quarter or from his house. He says, come ye, say they. He says, I will fetch wine and I will fill, he said, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. So instead of these teachers, these pastors teaching the word of God to the, to the sheep, they're just worried about how they're going to uh, fill themselves. They, they're getting drunk and how they can get more money from their, uh, from their uh, patrons. Like I said, uh, I guess every Sabbath or every Sunday. But the point is, watchmen, like I said, pastors, we're supposed to, um, Remind our people to be uh, to be diligent in the Lord, because it's also when you read in James chapter three verse one, 
we're going to get judged more harshly than, than you guys because we're supposed to be leading you guys to Christ. That's why it says in James chapter 3, verse 1, My brethren, be not many masters or teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So just knowing that when you're preaching this gospel and things like that, God's going to hold me accountable to make sure that I'm teaching this uh, word right to you guys because, hey, I don't want to have uh, blood on my hands. We're going to also talk about that as well later on. But okay, Jeremiah 6, 1 through 21. Jeremiah 6, 1 through 21. Go ahead. O oh, ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet of Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hakarim, for evil appears out of the north and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to comely and delicate woman, to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. He said what it is, it says, it says the shepherds shall, he says with their flocks shall come unto her and they shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place, meaning that these pastors are going to come and teach the people the word of God. That's what he's talking about, feed them of the word of God. Go ahead. Prepare ye war against her. Arise and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees, and cast a mount against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppressed. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. As a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Mm -hmm. Violence and spoil is heard in her. See, so violence and spoil is, uh, is heard in her in Jerusalem. But what is supposed to be righteousness going forth from Jerusalem? But it said, remember, our ancestors, they were not keeping the laws of God. Go ahead. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Mm -hmm. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem. Lest my spoil depart from lest thee. My soul. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, lest my soul depart from me, mm -hmm. from thee. Lest I make thee desolate and land not inhabited. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a great gatherer in the bask and to the basket. Right, so he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer until the basket, meaning that there's only going to be a remnant of the Israelites that's going to what? Keep the commandments of God or lay hold to the vine. However, because remember, Jesus is that true vine. But however, he's telling them to turn back as a hand grape gatherer until the basket because why? Majority of the Israelites or our people were not keeping the commandments of God. And Jeremiah was trying to remind them about constant rebellion. Go ahead, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and uh -huh. they cannot hearken. Mm. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. It's a reproach. It's like, it's like the word is like an insult to them. Go ahead. They have no delight in it. Yeah, therefore, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I am pouring it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The age with him that is full of days. Their houses shall be turned unto others, mm. with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For the from, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, everyone is given covetousness. Wow, he said from the least of them even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. So they're not even keeping the laws of God. Go ahead. And from the prophet un, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Mm -hmm. They have healed also the hurt of the dealer of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Right. Where were they shame when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. See, so look, she said, Were they ashamed when they had committed abominations? Nay, they were not ashamed. Because, you know, when you, especially when you repented and you turn from, the, uh, you turn from your wicked ways and come to God, you feel, like I said, remorseful of the life that you were living prior to coming into Christ. So, but these they're not ashamed. They're continuing living in that abomination. So they didn't really care. So that's why neither could they blush. Go ahead. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. Yes. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where 
is the good way mm -hmm. and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul. You see that? And we're going to read that because Jesus also pretty much alluded to this as well in like a Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. You know what I'm saying? But he says, he says, and as for the old past, where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul. You remember when it talks about walking in the Lord, when you go um, on how we're supposed to walk, you go to uh, Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18, I'm going to read verse 16 and 20. Exodus 18, 16 and 20, where he says, he says, and when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one another, and I will make known the statutes of God and his law. But look at verse 20. It says right here, um, verse 20, and thou shalt, he said, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and she said, shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. So you see that when it talks about right here in verse 16, Jeremiah 6, 16, thus say the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is a good way and walk therein that you should find rest for your souls. And how we're supposed to walk? By keeping the commandments of God. Go ahead. But they said we will not walk therein. They said we, the, I tell you, they said we are not going to keep the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead. Also, I said watchmen over you. Uh-huh, the watchmen, remember, these, these are the pastors now. Go ahead. Saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Mm -hmm. Therefore hear, you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Mm. What purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Nor your sacrifice is sweet unto me. So you see, so look, so here they are. They're still, even though right here in verse 19, oh, he says, Here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose come in there to me an incense from Sheba, and sweet came from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice sweet unto me, because here they are. They're not keeping the commandments of God, but yet they still try to go to church on the Sabbath day and offer up their offering and things like that unto the Lord like, like God's going to receive it. He's not going to receive it because you've been living all week like hell. Now you think you're going to come to church. You know what I'm saying? You think you're gonna, uh, and think I'm going to receive your offering. He said no because you've been disobedient this whole entire time. Go ahead. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Yes. Okay, amen, amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, 16 through 21. Ezekiel chapter 3, 16 through 21. Ezekiel chapter 3, 16 through 21. And when you get there, go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth. Hear the word at my mouth uh -huh. and give them warning for me. And give them what? Warning. warning. Right. Because remember, what the lot of believers need to hold each other accountable when walking in the Lord. You're going to see if we don't give uh, our brothers and sisters in the faith warning, we're going to have their blood on our hands. Go ahead. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, uh -huh. nor speakest to the warn. Speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Uh -huh. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, mm. but his blood will I require at thine hand. Right, because here it is. You know your brother and sister in the faith is out here doing that. that that's what. That's what. Uh, that's not right in the Lord, and yet you're not even warning them, letting them know, hey man, you know you're supposed to be keeping the Sabbath and feast days and things like that, and not be celebrating these pagan holidays. And you don't tell you just go, well, you know, just go and do what you got to do. No. He said, when you do that, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your thine hand. Because why? You didn't warn him. Go ahead. Yet if thou warn the wicked, uh -huh. and he turn not from his wickedness, yes. nor from the wicked way, his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy but your soul now, so now when you are reminding people to continue to stay faithful to the Lord and to keep his commandments and things like that, now if they continue not to do it, they'll die in their sins. But at least, like I said, uh, the blood will be rel uh, relinquished from your hands because at least you reminded them 
and told them about keeping the commands of God. Now, that's up, like I said, that's what the Bible says in uh, in uh, Philippians chapter two, verse twelve. Uh, he says, "Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling." Like I said, we all have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But if you still have to warn your brothers and sisters in the faith about not uh, continuing in sin, go ahead. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. Mm -hmm. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So just imagine a person who's been walking in the Lord, but then, you know, they've been walking the Lord 10, 20, 30 years, whatever like that, but they're like, you know what, man, I'm tired of doing this. All that stuff that they did, he said, that's why he said right here, look what he says right here in, uh, in, in verse 20. He says, and again, when a righteous man doeth, he says, do a turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou, he said, thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sins, and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. So all the stuff that he was doing in the Lord for those 20, 30 years he was walking the Lord, God said he not even remember any of that because why? He turned from the Lord and started doing wicked, wickedness. But go ahead. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, mm -hmm. and he does not sin, he shall surely live, Yes, because he is warned. Mm -hmm. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Praise God. So now, like it says, when you're preaching the gospel to a person who's receiving it, and they're still staying committed and, and walking diligent in the Lord, hey, they deliver their soul, and then you also deliver your soul as well. That's like that. So that's what we have to do as believers. Let's go now to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 13, 1 through 9. Luke 13, 1 through 9. Luke 13, 1 through 9. Luke 13, 1 through 9. Luke, yeah, because I have to, okay, Luke chapter, yeah, Luke chapter uh, 13, you there? One through, one through nine? Okay, go ahead. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, Mm -hmm. Ye shall all likewise perish. And remember, and repent means turning from your wicked ways and following God. Because the Bible says this about dealing with repentance. Um, Acts 3 and 19. Acts 3 and 19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So we got to repent and be converted. And how we converted according to God, not man's opinion. Uh, Psalms 19 verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7, good old repentance. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Go ahead. Are those 18 upon whom the tower at Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they, that they were sinners above all mm -hmm. men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. He's he talking about repenting, turning from your wicked ways. Go ahead. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find, find none. Mm -hmm. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig it about, dig about it, and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Right, so he says right here in verse 7, he says, Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. He says, Why cumbereth it? In the ground, meaning like we said, well, why is it using up the ground when it ain't when it's useless when you're not when it's not even producing fruit? He said the answer said to him, Lord, 
Let her, he says, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig it, he said, dig about it and dung it. He said, if it bear fruit, well, which is good, because if it bear fruit, that means that the, the, the tree's supposed to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. However, and if not, then he said, after that, thou shalt cut it down. That's also like I said, remember, this is a parable letting you know, hey, I'm telling you to repent, but if you want to continue in your sins, and if you're not uh, showing, uh, bearing any fruit, because remember, when we keep the commandments of God, like I said, in Psalms chapter 1, in Psalms chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, the Bible tells us how we're supposed to bear fruit. Clearly tells us how we're supposed to bear fruit. It says right here, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree trained by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So if that person is not producing fruit by keeping the laws of God, he said, you'll be good. You know, so, however, if you're not, you'll be cut down. You, be, you talk about being cut down, hewn and thrown into the fire. He's talking about throwing it to the lake of fire right there. But go ahead. So where are we now? Are we, are we done with it? Oh. No, not nine. Okay, that was it. That was nine. Okay, so now go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 11. Yeah, we're going to be in Peter for a while right here. Yeah, we're going to be in Peter for a while. Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 11. And when you get there, go ahead. Simon Peter a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given us, given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, mm -hmm. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, yes. that by these ye may, might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Yes. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, yes. and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, mm. and to temperance patience, yes. and to patience godliness, Amen. and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. And charity is love. Mm -hmm. And for these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, so he said, for if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall be what? Barren nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Cause why? Because as long as we continue to keep walking the Lord, that's how we're uh, able to produce fruit. Because um, uh, Paul also says the same thing in Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5. About producing this fruit as well. Galatians chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, such there is no law. And the day that are and they he says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with afflictions, uh, it's a, uh affections and lust. Because remember, lust and all these different things right here is what draw us away from Christ. But go ahead. But he that lacketh these things is blind and right. cannot see afar off. Uh -huh. And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See, he forgot he was purged from his old sins. Go ahead. Wherefore the rather brethren Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Yes. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 through 19. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 through 19. Because see, like I said, because Peter's giving us instruction on, on how to live for God. 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 through 19. And when you get there, go ahead. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that ye no longer should live the rest of this time in the flesh, to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Mm -hmm. But the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in the lasciviousness, mm. lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, mm -hmm. and abominable 
uh, idolatry. So you see that he says, for the time past, like in verse 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. What, who are the Gentiles? That's why the Bible says, do not learn the way of the heathens. Why? Because remember, the Gentiles didn't have the law. So it's like, look, you were one time walking as the Gentiles, not keeping the law, but now we're not supposed to be walking like that. That's why he said we're supposed to turn from uh, lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, abom he says, abominable idolatry. Go ahead, verse 4. Where they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, uh -huh. speaking evil of you, who shall give account to them that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Mm. For this cause must the gospel preach also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So he says, for he says, for this cause must the gospel preach also to them that are dead. Dead what? Not dead, because remember the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9, the dead know nothing. So he's not talking about the literal dead. He's talking about the ones who are dead, because why we are walking in the flesh. That's why it says that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Because when we're walking in the spirit, we're walking in everlasting life. When we're walking in the flesh, we're dead, because why we're dead in our sins. And the Bible says that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Go ahead. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober yes. and watch unto prayer. Yes. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for mm. charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Yes. Use hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man have received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Uh -huh. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look at it. He says that if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So this is why this is why we're doing because you got a lot of pastors. They may give you one or two Bible verses, but they're doing a whole lot of talking, but not a lot of reading of uh, uh, and giving understanding of, of the Word of God. That's why it says if any man speak, let him be. Let us speak the oracles of God. The oracles of God are God's lively words that we're reading in the Bible right now. These are these are his oracles. These are his lively words. So this is why we read so many passages because we can't. I can't just be sitting up here doing a lot of talking, giving you my own opinion. Because I, I hear some people say, like I talk to them, yeah, man, you know, a lot of times you, you use like a lot of Bible verses. Like, you know, like tell me in your own words. Like, give me your understanding. Like, like I don't want all these Bible passages. Just tell me what you think. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible says that. Trust in the Lord, lean not into thy own understanding. Acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. But a lot of times, people do not want to, like I said, when it comes to reading this word of God, they want to say, well, tell me what you think, but they don't want to read it. This is why, but see, when you're looking in, in Acts chapter 13, remember, when they went to church, what were they doing? We're doing the same thing that the apostles were doing when they went to church on the Sabbath day. Acts chapter 13, verse 14, it says, but when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in, Pis in Pisidia. And went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if, if any word of exhortation for the people, say on. But you see what they were doing, though. They were reading the law and the prophets on the Sabbath day. They just weren't going up there just doing a whole lot of talking without, without reading. So that's why it's important that if any man speak, let him speak as oracles of God, and if any man minister, minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, and God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12. Go ahead. 12. Oh. Um, when um, people ask you to give your personal experience, do you No, no, not experience, opinion. Oh. No, that's a, that's a difference, baby. Experience is different. Right. The Bible says that you know, we're overcome by the word of our testimony. Yeah, you give your your testimony experience, but opinion meaning like you'll read a Bible, a, a verse, and then, or talk about the Bible, they'll be like, no, just tell me what you mean. Like, like you don't have to read these Bible. Just tell me what you think. But you have to go into the word of God when you're talking about God because you have to give his, that's what the Bible says, that his word will not return back to him void. And it will accomplish wherever you send it, meaning that we have to preach this word of God by preaching and by reading his words. But, but unfortunately, a lot of these people, especially on these Sunday churches, a lot of pastors, they may give you a foundation scripture, things like that. But then the rest are doing, they're talking about a whole nother hour, but not reading any Bible verses. You can't do that. Go ahead. Verse 12. Verse Peter, uh, first Peter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, 
as though some strange thing happened unto you. Mm -hmm. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. So he says, so if you be reproached or insulted for the name of Christ, happy are ye. You know what I'm saying? Like that, because Jesus says the same thing in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, where it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, or insult you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted the uh, prophets which were before you. Go ahead. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Mm -hmm. On their part, is he is evil, spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. So right, so let me, so if they're going to assault us by us walking in the Lord, that's okay. You know, so we'll be glorified in the Lord. However, verse 15 says this. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, uh -huh. or as an evildoer, or as a busy, busybody. Or and, yeah, no, that, that's a busybody one that go around gossiping all the time. Mm -hmm. In other men's matters. Yes. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Uh -huh. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes. And if it first began at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? They're going straight to the fire. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The righteous scarcely be saved. So it said that we're scarcely saved. We're barely saved. Even though we're accepting Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and keeping the commandments, we are barely saved. But go ahead. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Lake of fire. Go ahead. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing as unto the faithful creator. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read 13 through 25. 1 Peter chapter 1. 13 through 25. 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 through 25. When you get there, go ahead. 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 through 25. Go ahead. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Right. Remember, but, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the former lesson of your ignorance. Because remember, before we came to Christ, we, we didn't know. That's what the Bible says, that if any man be in Christ, you become a new creature. Things of old have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Or your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold mm -hmm. from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, mm -hmm. but with the precious blood of Christ as of the Lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay, real quick, just real quick. I'm going to go back up to verse 15. Look at verse 15. He says, but as he said, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Real quick, uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. Because when people try to say that they're holy, well, are, if, you, if, if one considers themselves holy, are they doing these things right here? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. So you see that keeping the Sabbath also allows us to be holy. Holy. He also says the same thing about his dietary law. Look what he says right here about his dietary law. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 40. Let me see. Verse 43. It says, And ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth and neither should you make yourselves unclean with them, that you shall be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God, and you shall sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. See, so he's telling you, so you should be holy, for I am holy. So you can't be holy breaking the Sabbath day. You can't be holy 
eating unclean foods. But unfortunately, like he said, he tells us in Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 65, you got a lot of people who, who don't keep God's Sabbath day and do not keep his dietary law, but will still tell you that they're holy. And God said he's hot about that right here. He says, um, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 4, it says, Which remain among the graves and lodges and monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and the broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. He said, These are a smoke in my nose and a fire that burneth all day. So you got a lot of people who are claiming to be followers of Jesus, but yet are eating unclean foods. But then they'll still tell you that they're holier than thou. God said, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? Because he told you that you can't eat unclean foods and still think that you're holy. All right, go ahead. Where are we, where are we now? 20. Okay, go ahead. Who was verily ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Mm -hmm. Seeing ye have purified your soul and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love or a sincere love mm -hmm. of the brethren, that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, mm -hmm. being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, right. by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Yes. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of God. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Yes. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 and 2, and then 15 through 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Go ahead. This second epistle of love I now write unto you, uh -huh. in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, uh -huh. that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So you see that. Verse 2 says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So... You're seeing that Peter's telling you to what? Continue in the commandments of God. He's not telling you that the law is done away with. He knows the law to the cross and things like that. But yet, people run to Peter's epistles, I mean Paul's epistles, and believe that Paul is teaching against the commandments of God. Well, this is what Peter, this is why Peter um, warned us that people who are unlearned, what they're going to do with Paul's epistles. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. 15 through 18. Go ahead. And the count that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, uh -huh. as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, Yes. which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as, Twist. They, mm -hmm. as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So they're doing that to their own destruction. So now that now that we know that that now that we know that Paul is a is a, is a faithful brethren and he's keeping the commandments of God. Look what he says in verse uh, seventeen. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things. So now we're already aware now that people can be twisting Paul's epistles and other scriptures to promote lawlessness. So we're already aware of that because we we just saw Peter started out his epistles saying what. Keep the commandments, right? So now look at this. Read verse 17 again. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, oh. fall from your own steadfastness. Fall from your own steadfastness. Go ahead. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Right. So he says, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness or your own stability in the Lord. But he's telling you now, now that you know, he's saying, but look, because we all were pretty much an error of that. So now he says, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Meaning that now because we all were, were, uh, were victim of um, reading Paul's epistle, thinking Paul saying that we don't have to worry about keeping the law anymore, which he's clearly saying that we have to. That's why when you read Acts chapter um. 21, 17 through 24, 
he takes a Nazarite vow to prove that he was a law keeper and a law teacher. So we just have to understand, but God allows us to grow in grace. So it's a blessing that God has opened up our eyes, you know what I'm saying, to make sure, like, look, this is not what Paul was preaching. Like, he was actually a law keeper and teacher. So therefore, um, now we have to, like I said, so when we read Paul's epistles, that's why it says right here in verse 16, it says, and also in all his epistles, speaking to them of these things in which some things are hard to be understood. They are because people could take one or two verses of Paul and make a, and, and create a whole doctrine thinking that Paul's saying you ain't got to keep the Sabbath anymore. You can eat whatever you want. He's not saying those things at all. Go ahead. Okay, so now we're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 36. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, 11 through 16. Remember, God was constantly sending the prophets or messengers to our people, you know, something like that, to remind them to continue in the commandments and to keep a Sabbath. However, they didn't do it. So we're going to see what happened in 546, uh, in 546 BC when Nebuchadnezzar came down and just, just destroyed Jerusalem because of our disobedience. Second Chronicles chapter 36, Second Chronicles 36, 11 through 16. Second Chronicles 36, 11 through 16. And when you get there, go ahead. 2 Chronicles 36, 11 through 16. Go ahead. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. From the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he sniffed, stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen mm. and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. Yes. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by the messengers rising up the times. So look, so he said he sent to his uh, mess our prophets rising up the times or before times. Because remember, God was constantly sending his prophets to remind our people to continue to stay diligent in the Lord and to keep the commandments. Go ahead, but what? And sending uh -huh. because he had compassion on his people. Right. Mm -hmm. And on his dwelling place. Yes. But they mocked the messengers of God. Yeah, they're like, man, we ain't got to keep that law, man. We talk the same way they say it now. Man, we ain't got to keep that law anymore. You know that law is bondage. Go ahead. And despised his words. Yes. And disused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Right. And like I said, I mean, it's no need to read verses 17 through um, 21. Well, you know what? Read it. Go ahead. Just read it. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Read it. Read it. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees who mm. slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, mm -hmm. and had no compassion upon young men or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all unto into his hand, yes. and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And they burnt the house of God, mm. and break down the wall of Jerusalem. Mm and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. Mm -hmm. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were ser servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Right, that was Cyrus. Mm -hmm. To fulfill the word of the Lord by mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. Yeah, and that, that was the seven years that we were in captivity. So he was just saying, like, look, so it fulfilled. But he was just telling us, when you read Jeremiah chapter 16, he said, if you just keep my Sabbath, he said, if you just keep my Sabbath, he said, you don't even have to worry about um, getting kicked out of the land. But what did they do? We didn't even keep the Sabbath. So that's why I said for those 70 years. But it was already written, because you can also read that in uh, Leviticus 26. Um 33 through 34, that we are going to go into captivity for those 70 years. Go ahead. So, what, is stew for age like young? Like no, that's old. That's old. Yeah, stew for age means that they were old. Yeah, so yeah, so when Nebuchadnezzar came, he was killing women and children, old men, old women. He didn't care. He just killed everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to uh, Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, 
34 and 35. Luke chapter 13, 34 and 35. Luke chapter 13, 34 and 35. Let me get there. Go ahead. Luke chapter 13, 34 and 35. Luke chapter 13, 34 and 35. When you get there, go ahead. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which kills the prophets. He says, so look, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, which killed the prophets. Remember, he was sending his messengers or his prophets to remind our people to continue to stay faithful to the Lord, but yet we were killing them. You know what I'm saying? Because why? They didn't want to be obedient to them. Go ahead. And stonest them that are sent unto thee. Mm -hmm. How often would I have gathered thy children? See, and how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Uh -huh. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Yes. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when I say, when ye say, when ye shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, we're going to read 20 through 28. Matthew chapter 11, 20 through 28. Matthew chapter 11, 20 through 28. When you get there, go ahead. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. So he said that he began to upbraid or to denounce the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Go ahead. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Uh -huh. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. Uh -huh. For if the mighty works which were done in you had, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have been they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Well, uh -huh. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. You know why? Because here it is. He was giving them the word of God. You know, in Bethesda and Shazar, they were supposed to receive the word of God, but yet they didn't do it. So that's why it says in verse 22, but I say to you, it should be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Because Tyre and Sidon, they didn't have the commandments of God. But yet, since they didn't have the commandments of God, and you, Israel, I'm, you guys had it, it's going to be worse for you because at least they didn't have the word of God. That's why the Bible says this, um, Luke, I think it's Luke chapter 12. I think it's Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And I'm going to start at 45. It says, But if the servants say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and to drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will, he says, will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him a portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whom much is given, and of whom much is required, and to whom men have committed much of them will they ask the more, meaning that, see, Beth uh, Bethesda, they had the word of God. So God said, I'm going to judge you more harshly. Now, granted, Tyre and Zidon, they didn't have the law. So, we, so I'm not going to judge them as harsh as I'm going to judge you. That's what he's telling uh, That's what he's telling Israel. But go ahead. Where are we at now? Verse 23? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And though Capernaum, let's see, and thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. And if the mighty works which have been done in thee and, and been, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Remember, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. You know what I'm saying? But they were you know, committing homosexuality acts and things like that. But he's telling Capernaum, he said, hey, you guys have the word of God. Yeah, you're not doing it. He trusts me, those, those people in Sodom, they're not going to be judged as harsh as the ones who were receiving the word of God. And like I said, it applies to us as uh, today as well. Where are we at? Verse 25, go ahead. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven, 
and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Right, and like I said, that's what we're considered. We're, we're considered babes unto Christ, because what? Remember, like, you can tell a child certain things the word of God, they'll receive it and attain it because, you know, especially if it's sound doctrine. But people that are, you know, like that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know what I'm saying? Like that, when, when someone's already settled in their ways, you try to bring them the word of God. Just like right now, we're telling people don't keep Sunday, keep the Sabbath day. They're settled in their ways. They're thinking, well, not well, everyone's doing it. Well, I don't believe that. Well, look, I'm going to do Sunday anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like that are pagan holidays instead of God's holy days. They're, they're settled in their ways. It's hard for them to receive the word of God. Go ahead. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Yes. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Right, so us, we know the Father, and we know the Son. Why? Because, we, because like I said, we're reading his words, so we know who they are. But it's a lot of people who claim they know the Father and know the Son, but they reject him, though. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's why he also, what is that? I think it's John, was it John 16, 3? I think it's John 16, 3. Uh, I right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, it's um, John 16, 3. He says, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I'm telling you, people do certain things. They don't know the Father, nor do they know the Son like they claim they do. But go ahead. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and yes. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh -huh. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Remember, you should find rest unto your souls. Remember, we read that earlier in Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 6. However, they get the term, no, Jesus is their Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you look at this word rest, this word rest in the Greek is not even the same word as sabbaton as, as dealing with the Sabbath. It's not even the same word for Sabbath. It's, it's a different word, but they use this to say, man, Jesus is my Sabbath, so I ain't got to keep the Sabbath. Ignorantly, you know what I'm saying, using this, but go ahead. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Last one, last one. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Isaiah 58, I'm, yeah, Isaiah 58, verse 1. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Go ahead. Cry aloud, spare not. Spare not. Mm -hmm. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Yes. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Amen. And that's Amen. what we're supposed to do. That's why I said believers need to hold each other accountable when walking in the Lord. So I pray you guys some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good job,